Hello brothers and sisters, Cameron here. I hope that your day is going well. And this is a review of part one of The Witnesses. It's an oxygen documentary on the Oxygen Network. You can watch it for free. If you haven't watched it yet, you should stop, go watch that first, and then come back because there's some heavy spoilers in here. Um, the way to watch it, it, they did have a link on YouTube and I spread that on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram and TikTok at Cameron Fader, you should because I'm giving constant updates there almost daily versus here where it's going to be weekly, maybe bi-weekly is the goal. But Instagram and TikTok is almost daily and you can interact with me a lot more there. Um, download the Oxygen app and then you can find that on the App Store. You can watch the first episode for free, and then you can get the NBC link by airdropping it or copying and pasting it or going to NBC.com and watching the searching the witnesses episode two. If you sign up with an email, you can get three credits for free to watch three different shows for free. One of them can be the witnesses. So I saved you some money. Thank me later. So now that that uh, has been put in place that there's gonna be heavy spoilers. Let's jump right into it. Um, I actually watched it yesterday. This weekend was crazy. I literally had plans to go get a haircut, to go do a bunch of grocery shopping, to go like hang out with my cousin and plan a video with her and do all this shit and all my side hustles and stuff. And I had to like cancel all that after I watched it because I started watching it and I had to cancel the rest of my day because it was an emotional wreck and I couldn't leave. But it, it was insane some of the things. Like, I knew a lot about the child abuse stuff, especially working on SB 360, being heavy involved in politics here in Northern California and going to the Capitol. If you didn't know about all that work that we are already doing and trying to get all churches and organizations and, and secular businesses from hiding abuse by claiming clergy penitent privilege, this is something we've been trying to figure out and work on for years now, and we won't stop. And it's nice to give the, see a documentary that gave this a lot of light. Uh, Trey Bundy is the um, the guy who has been in, doing investigative reporting for over five years now, and um, he interviewed four women, um, at least in the first part. There was I got some notes: Debbie McDaniel, make sure I get their names right; Dolores Lyles, Chessa Mannion, and Sarah Brooks. Those were the those are the four women that were had some horrible abuse going on. However, not uncommon now that I'm out of the Jehovah's Witnesses and I've met a lot of abuse victims, survivors, um, and I've been involved in a lot of news cast, and I'm a survivor myself of child abuse through the Jehovah's Witnesses, and their systemic abuse of people and systemic hiding of abuse and hiding pedophiles. I know exactly what that's like, and it pissed me off to no fucking end. Like, I had to cancel all my plans because I was an emotional wreck yesterday and not do shit. I had just like let my feelings feel and vent what I was authentically feeling in that moment instead of hiding it and pretending like my day was okay and and doing all my rest of my plans. Um, well, there are days where you have to kind of stuff it stuff it down a little bit so you can finish your day and get through work and and get shit done that is required. Yesterday, I just had to take a mental and emotional day for myself and um, I got some stuff done, but I, I had to spend some time just like processing it because there's there was I thought I knew. You know, I was actually interviewed by Trey Bundy. Um, my interview did not make the first video. I'm in the credits, though, under special thanks. I'll try to put up a screenshot of that because I was super proud of that. Um, I was interviewed for him at the Emeryville office, which is in Oakland in San Francisco, California area. And Trey's a really cool guy. He he actually gives a shit. I'm going to – I don't have a Twitter, and that's the only one he has. Trey, if you're watching, get your ass on Insta. Get on TikTok. Get on YouTube. Twitter's hella old. Get on it, bitch. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing. This needs as much support. It needs to blow up as much as possible. We gotta get this shit trending. We gotta get people talking about it. I'm talking about it and try to blow it up as much as possible. Also, Angela, if you're watching, um, what's up? Thank you for your work and being a cool as hell person and giving a shit and working your ass off on these documentaries too. Uh, she's, she's pretty cool. I'm trying to tag her in as much stuff as I can. Thank you to the whole team and the crew because it was clear you guys did your research. It was clear you gave a shit, and it was clear that the language we in, in, in a lot of documentaries and a lot of people. I've been in, involved in some other investigative reportive stuff. A lot of times you have to slow down and explain the whole hierarchy, the 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 rules, the language, and they were pretty up to date and speed on it, uh, which was impressive. Like they understood a lot of things. We barely had to clarify. I, I just I feel grateful to be you know have having been a part of it. I don't know what's going to happen to that feud that footage. I don't know what if there's going to be a you know season two episode three or an episode three that's later on revealed to talk about the work that we're doing because uh, we've had massive 
massive pushback from all churches, not just the Jehovah's Witnesses, but massive institutions, the Catholics, um, the Pacific Justice Institute, which represents like dozens of different Christian religions. And when you can see through the bullshit, you know, if this, if God was real and if God was gave a shit and these people that claim to know God, would his actions be so evil in the Bible, number one, because he did some horrible things. And number two, with these organizations, they would do the right thing. And my only assumption is why the governing body, Catholicism, and all these other Christian denominations hide this shit is because they're doing it too. That's the only logical explanation that I can come up with is that they have members that have done it too. Um, one of the, some of the numbers I took down, there's about 18,000 Jehovah's Witnesses that are pedophiles in the United States alone. And, and that's basing the numbers off the episode where they did, uh, you know, Australia, everyone knows about Australia Royal Commission, where they found a thousand reported cases for 70,000 Jehovah's Witnesses in Australia. So multiplying those numbers is about 18,000. That's about an average of one to two pedophiles per congregation. And with the congregations being compounded and downsized, that's, that's one to two pedophiles that are around and exposed to children that are probably not registered. Some of them are. And go door to door and spend time alone. Some of the stories in this video, like what, what Debbie McDaniel went through, where the congregation trusted the the elder, his name was Ronnie Lawrence, sick motherfucker. Um, he would have kids pool parties and then molest the kids and have them spend the night going over the watch terror to prepare comments. And he would do some sick, disgusting things. You've got to go watch it um, to these poor kids and she didn't talk about it like a lot of abuse survivors, um, including myself. You don't just don't talk about it for a long time because the organization systemically tells, and I've had the elders tell me this to my face and to my mother, who is still an active Jehovah's Witness to this day, to not talk about it for fear of bringing uh, reproach on Jehovah God's name and to uh, just leave it in Jehovah's hands and Jehovah will take care of it in time. Well, if that's true, Jehovah's one sick motherfucker, and then you're giving the you're victimizing the victim to shut up, because you're worried about lawsuits and how the your image, which is shouldn't be important. You know, if the, if I if I'm trying to build a company, I'm trying to build a production company on my own side because that's something I wasn't allowed to do growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. I told I had to give my, I was told I had to give my whole life to the Jehovah's Witnesses, and when I got out, now that I you know rebuilt my self esteem and I know that I can do this. The moment I find someone doing some sick shit, yes, I'm gonna be fair and talk to both sides because I, I get some accusations could be true and everyone deserves to have the uh, positive assumption, positive intent, and both sides need to be heard. But the moment I find out and confirm things with uh, evidence and or not, not even including a two witness rule, that person's gone. And I would rather be known as a business owner or a YouTuber or vlogger who kicks someone else out and stood up for the victim and did the right thing or suspended somebody or did something, fucking something, because these motherfuckers are just protecting each other and all the religions do it. Catholicism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Scientology, uh, it's huge in Hollywood, the music industry, like the whole system is fucking disgusting and the United States is a harbor um, for all these guys to hang out and touch little kids and stare at their buttholes. It's fucking disgusting and I literally want I've never been so enraged where I had to take off a whole day just to like chill. I have, you know, working in the in the stuff that we're working in, but man, I'm just, I'm going on a rant. There's so much that happened. The blue envelopes, I didn't know about that, where if a child abuse is, is suspected, I already know some incognito elders that give me heads up, like they immediately have to connect and contact the legal department in, um, in, uh, in, in, in Bethel headquarters in New York but I didn't know they had blue envelopes. Um, I, I know that footage from the uh, the database is older, and I would I'm gonna pull up some footage of that. I would like to go over that for that. I think it was Ash, I think that was the, the brother that was in charge of that information where he also admitted that it wasn't just child abuse, it was murder, fraud, assault, um, just a bunch of evil shit that's marked as do not destroy that's going on inside the Jehovah's Witnesses. There's some crazy, fucking shit and it's just I'm just vomiting from the mouth right now all my feelings the next day now that I can not be an emotional wreck um Chessa Mannion and Sarah Books Chessa Mannion was touched up a little bit Sarah Books was touched up she was leading into part two where she was abused by a male and a female 
uh, at a very early age because all the trust is put into you know righteous Jehovah's Witnesses and only Jehovah's Witnesses have their own internal court system which we've all known we all if you grew up that way you know you're familiar that you're taught to think that the all the media organizations the military the police are controlled by Satan the devil so it's it's better and they link it to a scripture too I'm gonna have to look that scripture too where it says to trust God's um, holy members before you would trust the world and I remember growing up with the Jehovah's Witnesses giving talks the elders giving talks that the worst person in the organization is more trustworthy than the nicest person outside who is not a Jehovah's Witness it's disgusting so what they're saying what they're systemically brainwashing kids to, to believe especially females and young boys that the worst child abuser in the Jehovah's Witnesses is safer to be around than a you know gay activist rights person for the LGBTQ movement on the outside who hasn't done a thing in their life but try to you know be a good person or someone who's just super sweet super sweet but just believes differently that's all disgusting <sighs> episode one was a lot to, I'm only gonna talk about episode one here I'll talk about episode two as soon as I can um, it's a lot man it's a lot bruh just a fucked like dead ass this shit's a lot uh my my interview i was interviewed for it it was not in it but i'm in the credits like i said earlier don't know what they're going to do with that i'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future especially as we do more work on sb360 and we find the right senator or stick with the right senator uh, at the capitol in california sacramento which is close to where i live in northern california um, we're working really, really hard because there's a lot of states and churches and there's other bills, like the other bill with the statute of limitations, when you hit 30, you're not allowed to like talk about your abuse and you can't go forward and report it anymore because it's like you're 30, you waited forever. That's wrong because a lot of people don't come out with their abuse until they're almost 30 or 40 or even older because they're in a systemic process of just keeping quiet because they were mentally and verbally and physically abused to the point of thinking their self-worth was so little where they can't talk about it. Fuck, there's so much to talk about. Um, there's a lot going on, just a, just a lot. And the documentary was really well shot. Trey was, was really, he did his homework. One of my favorite things is that he went to Debbie McDaniel and Dolores Lyle's abuser and they followed their story where they actually got a guy to disfellowship, but they reinstated him a year later. A fucking year later like just coming back to meetings and not talking to anyone definitely that totally in the mindset of a Jehovah's Witness I get it but on the outside it doesn't make any sense for forgiving a pedophile thinking they won't do it again by disfellowshipping them because the court system on the inside of Jehovah's Witnesses is safer than the outside where she went to the police accidentally in the documentary and they actually did an investigation and started following up on it and did the right thing um, there's so much. This organization is so evil. There, when getting out, and I found out, you know, the blood belief because that's what triggered me when I got out was I was paranoid about getting in a car accident because I thought I was going to die and lose my place in the new system with Jehovah, and I wouldn't make it. When I found out that was a lie, it was literally like a domino effect of all these fucking dominoes falling down. It wasn't just one thing that was a lie; it was everything that was a lie. And then once I took that in a year later. I realized I was still fucked up and I had a lot of uh, beliefs that were still in the Christian world and based off of JW stuff and it was I was still fucked up. I had to let a lot of that go but address it and put it in its place so I could become a better person. Um, I still had a lot of like misogynistic views and uh, I'm pretty alpha type personality and I like to joke around about that stuff but it's not serious where we're putting women down, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses. They are huge Scientology, putting women in, in limiting their cap, and it's an overly man-hungry and man-powery organization, powerful organization. So women have no rights. So all these beta males are running it. Um, it's it's just disgusting. The whole fucking thing needs to stop and end. Will it stop and end in my lifetime? I doubt it because they've been around for over a hundred years. But can we kick them in the fucking balls and punch them in the face? Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do with the work. So if you're not subscribed already, you should. You can check out a bunch of videos I've already done where I've gone to the Capitol, put myself on the line, and we're working with the CCLA. It's a California Civil Liberties Advocacy Group in California trying to get um, all churches from stopping 
claiming clergy penitent privilege when anyone any, ever confesses anything, which goes in the face of the two witness rule, plus the statute of limitations uh, bill, which we're all working on and keeping our eye on too. It's just a very small team, and some of the the brothers that are in it are incognito Jehovah's Witnesses, so it's very hard for them to balance a bunch of shit that's going on. I can't say who they are because I can't give up their their cover. But I'm very thankful to be a part of it, and I'm just grateful for your guys' support because going forward, we're going to need it. This affects everybody, all religions, all cults, um, and secular jobs, organizations, everything. So this is a huge fucking deal, and only a few states have passed where clergy penitent privilege is bullshit. Oh my god. Ah, shit. There's just so much going through my mind right now. It just doesn't cease to amaze me. Like, what else do we not know? What else is there? What other shit are we not aware of? The public, uh, because they hide this shit. You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't know. The Mormons don't know. The Scientologists don't know about this kind of abuse because it's hidden from them. The the members say that, you know, Satan is attacking and he's going to do it legally. And, well, that's that's the legal department and the governing body worried about their bank account and their reputation because they're afraid. Um... I guess the biggest takeaway I can pull from this is if, if you are a child, a woman, an adult, a man, a kid, a boy, whatever, non-binary, whatever, and you're being abused and you're stuck in the Jehovah's Witnesses, the biggest thing that abusers use to continue the abuse is to hide it and put pressure on the victim to make them feel like they can't talk. And that's the biggest thing that child molesters do. Uh, or people in abusive relationships, same shit, is they smother them and keep their distance, put their eye on them, and then keep abusing, so that way they can keep find another victim and keep that victim quiet for as long as possible. And all these organizations have been working uh, legally and working on bills and paying legislature and or working on legislature and paying certain people to represent them to get bills passed, so that way they can system so that way they can systemically hide child abuse. Uh, but if anyone's being abused, the biggest and best thing you can do is go directly to the police. You as a child, please go to the police and talk. Tell them what happened. And especially if you're awake and you know that the Jehovah's Witness religion or whatever it is, is bullshit. They're trying to hide it because they're afraid of that getting out. Um, versus they're, they're, giving, they're putting their reputation to convert more members above the safety of you. So if you go to the cops with or without your parents' permission, you know it's bullshit, your gut is right, what happened to you is disgusting and wrong, go talk to them. And it's painful because it's your parents and the congregation you grew up in and you love those people and you were taught that they're holier than thou, but if someone really loves you, they wouldn't do that shit to you. They would protect you. And they're not protecting potentially thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, it's just scary because I have, you know, I have family that are in the Jehovah's Witnesses that are young and they're, who knows what's going to happen to them. Um, it's really scary. And then I have worldly family that I'm very close to. And like my, my little cousin Kalani, she's 14. If anything were to happen to her or my, my three-year-old little Layla, um, he's only like my cousins, even like nine-year-old Jonah, I would beat the fucking shit out of anybody that touches my kid that way. And I think most of you would agree with me. Anyone that lays a hand sexually on my child or on my family or on my cousins, my my girlfriend, whatever it is, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm going to expose the fuck out of you and I'm going to pursue you like a motherfucker. <sighs> This this is this is bad. This is huge. The problem is worse than I thought. And it just fuels me to continue to do this type of work and put out a lot more content and, and work even harder in 2020. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. This is just mind-blowing. I usually try to have lightheartedness to these videos, but this is just me spouting everything that I'm feeling right now. Um, anyway, brothers and sisters, that's all I can think of at the moment. Uh, I, I, there's a lot to talk about. Please go watch it. Subscribe to this channel. Find me on TikTok. Find me on Instagram. I'm very interactive on those two. And we'll connect. And, and we need your support. We need your word of mouth. Um, also, because of everything that's happening right now, these bans are temporarily being um, 
postponed just for probably another week or two, and then we'll send out the links to the pre-orders. It's the ex-Jehovah's Witness ban that says freedom is worth it, so when you leave and all the things that you lose, you're cut. <laughs> the battery died for a second. When it comes to the things that you lose, when you leave the organization, it's absolutely worth it. And that's what this band is all about, is to be proud of what you are becoming and what you are now, because you were taught that pretty much everything to growing up as Jehovah's Witness is backwards, but it's time to be proud. So I apologize about the wait on these bands. The links and emails will be sent out soon, probably in the next two weeks, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but I had to slow down for this documentary and all the stuff that was happening about it, plus take a mental day for myself just being as forthright as I can because that's the only way I know how to be. Brothers and sisters, I love you all. I hope that this video has helped. Um, please spread the word. We gotta get this shit trending. We gotta get it out there. Um, spread this documentary. Uh, even people, like I have people that I work with who know Jehovah's Witnesses and are friends with them and they're, or their family is and they're worried about their grandkids, like share this with everybody so that way they can at least keep their eye out and be informed because when you, the more you know, the more you can stop or at least be there for someone who needs you. And we never know when that'll happen. But brothers and sisters, I am looking forward to seeing you in part two of the review of episode two of The Witnesses. Go watch it, and I'll see you in the next video. Brian Little. <laughs>